Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our Saturday broadcast at the virtual session at the M Spirit Society of Baltimore. Before we start every Saturday, we always start off with reading a short message um, from Happy Life or other inspirational books and open up with a prayer just to set the tone for this evening. So this is on page 134 of Happy Life. The youth of your body is fleeting. Utilize it to store up eternal values. The green of the years passes quickly, but the commitments made extend for a whole existence. Be careful with them. The good commitments will be sentinels on your journey, blessing your hours, and the bad ones will turn into pitiless collectors disturbing your peace. Place signposts of light along the way to indicate the ground you have covered. Stay young at any age through a conscience, conscious without remorse and correct conduct. Wonderful reminders from our dear Joanna DeAngelis. So join me now in our opening prayer. As we lift our thoughts to our divine creator, our Father, Mother, God. We thank you so much for the blessing of this moment to connect with our spirit friends and our spiritual family and those of like-minded thoughts and ideals from across the globe. In gratitude also to all the pioneers that have come before us that have paved the way for allow us to have access to all of this knowledge and we ask, dear God, that you especially bless our speaker, Leo, this evening. May he be inspired and be a vessel for the good and noble spirits. And may all those who are connected to us in this presentation this evening, may they receive your heavenly blessings, your solace, and your warmth, dear Creator. We thank you. And so be it. All right, dear friends. Well, today we have Leo coming back again with us to study again this the more chapters in this book. Um, chapters two and three. Leo, I don't want to take up any more of your time, so I'm going to go ahead and let you get to it. Hello, everyone, and just uh, give me a moment here as we try to sort out some uh, issues here. Uh, just hang in there, and uh, we will be coming back soon here to talk with one another and do what we're supposed to do. <laughs> hang in there. Don't save. All right, so I need to go back here. As usually happens, right, when we are trying to do a good work or uh, try to lead uh, something that will free our minds from the difficulties of every day, guess what? Technology and all kinds of crazy things gets on the way, but that's okay. That's the, There's nothing, um, and I, I ask for forgiveness for the flickering camera. I don't know what's going on there. But we'll try to, um, you know, get ourselves together here and uh, do our presentation as we're supposed to. It happened. Some it, might say it's the Matrix, Leo. It's right. <laughs> <laughs> I already turned it off and I already turned it off and, and, and turn it back on. But it, it is what it is. We'll, we'll stick yeah. with what we have and uh, not really worry about, you know, anything that is uh, uh, beyond the message today. Give me one second. I just want to make sure that I share here. Sure. Share screen. And it will be this lovely guy over here. All right. Perfect. OK. So um, thank you, everyone, for bearing with us as we go through uh, this uh, bumpy um, start over here. It's OK. It's nothing to worry about. Um, and uh, as Kirsten was saying, giving continuation to uh, this amazing work by 
uh, Manuel Filomena de Miranda and uh, Devaldo Franco, as you can see, today we'll be covering uh, chapters three and four. Uh, before we get into that, I, I, want, I would like to, first of all, share with you, um, you know, my excitement about this work because it, it is as if, uh, it is actually not as if, but it, it is, you know, uh, Manuel Filomena de Miranda describing what's going on with us right now, right? Unlikely the other um, two two other uh, works that they presented to us, Planetary Transition and On the Way uh, to a Planet of Regeneration. Um, well, uh, I'm sorry, the Dawn of a New Era uh, right here. Uh, we see that, that, you know, it is, it was events that actually happened, you know, prior to us, right? And I always like to remember, remind ourselves of this because there is a, a catch to that. And at the end of, the, of our conversation to this, to, uh, to today, we will touch based on this beginning, the slightly uh, hint that I'm giving it to you, which is, you know, what is about to come. But it's happening, right? It's still happening. If we're talking about the development of the uh, the coronavirus, what has happened, what do we know. Today, we're going to touch on some of these aspects as well. Um, but what happens in in uh, behind the scenes, right? On on what we cannot see, especially us or who are not uh, ostensive mediums, right? We, there's no way for us to see. I mean, we can feel it. We'll we'll connect um, or not, uh, and we're going to talk about it um, to higher minds. Um, but we'll also connect with negative minds who actually partake in the madness that are that is going on, right? Uh, and that's up to us to change. And I think this message today will be. Um, uh, first and foremost, uh, to alert us in this in this manner, and I think that's why we have the flicking camera. That's why we have the the different issues that uh, that ha has happened. As we were saying before, I want to just get the book because there are a couple things that we want to reference back to the book here. As we were saying before, uh, we have covered uh, the introduction um, that talked about. Uh, the introduction, you know, given an idea of what the uh, this book will be about, uh, the alarm buggles um, and establishing tasks, right? Pretty much the preliminary work. Uh, we we went through this, um, if I can say this way, the state of our planet right now, right? Um, you know, with in regards to what's going on, where we came from. Uh, the reasons uh, which pretty much, you know, sets the, the tone and the reasons why, gives us the reason why we are here now. And uh, also what's going to happen to us, um, depending on how we behave, on how we connect with one another, right? And today, obviously, uh, we will talk about adjusting to new lodgings um, and activities uh, overview. So adjusting to, the, to, to new lodgings, as we have seen on... Uh, planetary transition and uh, dawn of new era is um, mainly Manuel Filomena Miranda, Manuel Filomena Miranda, Mr. Um, um, Miranda, uh, going to the location where they're going to um, establish themselves to conduct the work. It is in the physical. It is it, part is in the physical realm. Part is in the spiritual realm. Right. A every location um, in on on planet Earth, there is a connection with the beyond. Right. I know you may be thinking, wait a minute. Uh, yeah, I knew that about, about spirit to center, but our house is also um, has a location with the spiritual world. Number one, our mentors. Number two, you know, the mentors of our family. Sometimes there could be, you know, a group of of mentors working with us. Right. Um, for sure, it's a group of people, a group of spirits, because we I have a mentor, you know, my partner, my kids, they have their mentors who have been working with them for you know, several reincarnations, right? Um, and, and we can call garden angels, whatever that may be. So the, the the new lodging, the new location where Mr. Miranda and a group of people and the 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 guide of um, of the work, right? The head of the work will be staying at a spiritist center that is connected, that is has an extinction in this spiritual realm. Activities overview, he will be talking about, um, uh, Mr. Miranda and some of the workers uh, will be talking about, you know, what is going to happen and how they will act and what their, their intentions are in terms of the work they would like to do from the spiritual realm connected with the physical realm, right? Us, incarnated ones. So let us um, dive into this um, 
uh, the, these teachings because it, it's very enlightening and it really calls our attention to many aspects, right? Adjusting to new knowledge uh, uh, lodgings. Mr. Mariano then starts by, you know, in, in the poetic calling uh, our attention to nature, right? It's always um, um, good to remind ourselves of this. Upon arrival, we immediately headed to the institution that would serve as the headquarters for our activities. The location was very pleasing close to the sea, allowing us to benefit from the emanations of the ocean, uh, the o excuse me, the ocean, the glow of the plankton at night, and the sap of trees that are of great aid with regards to human per spiritual um, constitution. And again, the reason we bring this is because nature is important for all of us. Nature is not just for us to um, appreciate in terms of, oh, that's a beautiful tree, it's sunny outside, or it's cloudy, or it's, uh, um, you know, there's there's this very beautiful green area. Let's go ahead and just uh, sit down and, and, and enjoy uh, at a picnic, right? It's beyond that. Um, it, it, nature has um, a great impact on our lives, and we also impact, obviously, nature. And it's important for us to remind ourselves of this because it is through these different um, uh, environments that the spirits also um, connect with God, number one, and through you know, in connecting with God as well as as extracting energies that are necessary for them to continue their work to um, to do what they're supposed to do, right? Um, these elements in, on, on nature brings us um, uh, several, um, let's say, uh, nourishments that we need to go on. So it's important for us to connect whichever level way we can uh, to these uh, to these elements. Um, and I say this because perhaps, you know, one may like, um, you know, the cold weather, you know, to be outside. One may like the summer. May One may like, the, you know, the spring. Whatever they may be, we need to find within ourselves and around us the best way possible to connect with, with nature, thus connecting with God as well. It's not by chance that these spirits, when they say something, there's a meaning behind. And we need to really rescue this when we're reading these chapters. Well-designed uh, gardens display a variety of flowers, which gave away the fragrances, while myriads of insects flew around in the sacred process of life under the vibrational assistance of the el elementals. This is we, we kept this and we found we found very interesting that he mentioned this to us. And then there is a, actually a footnote where where uh, Dr. Miranda points out that this is related to question 536 of the spirits book when Kardec actually asked the spirits, are the great phenomena of nature those considered as perturbations of the elements due to fortuitous causes or do they all have a providential purpose? And the answer of the spirits is, Everything has a reason for being and nothing occurs without God's permission. It cannot be otherwise. God does not act directly on nature, but has devoted agents on every degree of the world's scales. We didn't bring this on, but again, this is just to, um, to explicitly, you know, call our attention that these elements or the elementals or whatever we want to call uh, the mosquitoes, right? They're not there to make us unhappy, right? They're not there just to, you know, create um, noises. You know, it's very interesting that I, I live in a semi-rural area uh, in, you know, Westminster, Maryland. And during the, um, the during the summer, anything after five o'clock or six o'clock, well, I should say during the summer, it, it gets dark a little bit later. I don't mind, but some people have mentioned to me that it's kind of noisy. Uh, you hear the frogs, you hear all kinds of insects going on, um, uh, the birds, you know, and all those things. Some people get upset with it. And I'm like, no, I love this. This is amazing, right? This is nature talking to us. It's God talking to us. It's life, right? Um, repeating itself to ourselves, you know, to us. And and it's important for us to, to take in consideration that perhaps we may not understand, but it is important for all of us. There is an importance and most importantly, a reminder that God is in control, and who are we to say that this or that is not important for us? The premises were part of a spiritist community. 
dedicated to the illumination of consciences and moral edification through the study of Kardec's uh, um, spiritist um, codification. Fraternal assistance was carried out in that same space, extended both to the incarnate shattered by the, existent, the exist, existential difficulties and the discarnate sufferers, among whom we noticed perverse adversaries of people that were ill, as well as enemies in particular processes of mutual persecution. So we see this, this, um, this two-way work here, right? Not only um, um, you know making reference of the to the idea that the the spiritist center the this this location was working on with on both realms of life, but also helping individuals who were persecuted and those who are persecuting, right? Um, so the the work is is for all of us. It's not just for the individuals who is being uh, quote unquote uh, point out as as a victim. But the victors as well because we never know and we're not here to judge but we don't know what has happened in the past for that individual to be in that position the administrator of the lodgings reserved for us was a very nice lady about 60 60 years of age who worked with visitors that frequently stayed in the spiritist community many of them arrived with special tasks to serve the community itself while others were brought in for a spiritual training particularly with the newly discarnated, right? So then this lady actually guided them um, into the facility that they would be staying. Uh, so they, they later on would meet with other minds as well. I would like to point out that uh, throughout this chapter, um, Mr. Miranda also makes reference to the, the, the elegance, not only uh, of the location, but also the, the, uh, how organized the location is, right? The work is organized. You see, he mentions that everybody seems to be busy working on both realms of life, but there is organization, there's love, there's kindness, right? And we're going to see a little bit more of this, but it really amazes me because every now and then when we, you know, read these passages again, uh, we just kind of cut through or browse through these teachings and we don't really apply in our lives, right? And this could actually be to the extent of what are we doing, you know, when we get up in the morning, right? What are our first thoughts or our first feelings, right? Um, and then how do we conduct ourselves? How do we treat the material around us? How do we organize ourselves so that we don't, we're not feeling overwhelmed, right? So all of these things, it's important for us to, um, to be reminded uh, so that we also take the examples that are bring, brought to us here and then apply in our lives. And there is a, once more, we're going to connect with this, with this idea later on. A normal school, a temple of faith, a research lab, wherever services to elevate society are carried out, become blessed sanctuaries of love and the good, looked after by kind spirits, placed there by uh, placed there as guardians to fend off the instruction of idlers, deceivers, and troublemakers. Then he continues by saying, and there is a reason why this is read, once human perception expands further, penetrating the various vibrational layers between the physical and the spirit world, it will enable the knowledge that life does not stop, that the idea of empty space spaces is a result of the insufficiency of human senses. We'd like to just pause right here and kind of take a look of this first paragraph here on this slide. Anything, any, any, any condition that we create, um, and, and I say condition is uh, thoughts, feelings that we, we preserve inside of us that are good becomes um, uh, something noble, right? We all know this, it's very trivial. Uh, it, it, it's very um, it, it, a very easy concept to understand and to grasp, right? I mean, if we're thinking positive, guess what? We're going to connect with positive things. But when we extend this to in our lives, in our routines and in, in our environment, right? Um, guess what? As it's saying here, it becomes uh, um, a, a an elevated 
uh, location or sanctuary, blessed sanctuary, it's saying here. And we can do this to our homes. It's not necessarily just the spirit to center. It's not just necessarily the uh, uh, a church, a, a, a place of worship, right? It can be done this in 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 one room of our houses the the second room and the bathroom the kitchen um every location and and it's interesting because um mr miranda actually starts by contemplating the 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 garden right the outside and one of the first things that we notice when we're getting to a home is what the the first steps of the home right the 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 outside of the home whether you live in a home or perhaps in a condo or an apartment the, you know, when you have that welcome mat in front of the house that says welcome, right, that the, or has a beautiful picture. Some of us like to change, you know, during the seasons as well, which is a beautiful thing, you know, for us to kind of get into the spirit, right? Um, but you see the organization. You see how well treated it is. It's welcoming. And then if, if that is truly what we're trying to do and if that is very um, persistent within ourselves, we see that the extension of that welcoming mat, that that beautiful garden inside of the house as well, because we start thinking, well, if I'm treating of the outside, guess what? I'm going to treat of the inside as well. And that can go both ways. If we start thinking well, feeling well, then we're going to start thinking about, you know what? I don't like the clutter around me anymore. Uh, I don't like to, to see that things are not in its place anymore, right? And then we start changing the, the 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 whatever it's inside of us and outside or outside inward right it can go both ways and it's just something that we'd like to point out because this is how we're going to connect more with these higher minds because these higher minds they preserve and they like the idea of order right it's not order in terms of you know being demanding but invitational for us to live a better life a more uh, easy life and this idea of the human perception expanding, it's important for us to connect as well. And again, at the end of this talk to, uh, tonight, we will really emphasize on this a little bit further, but it's for us to connect with these higher minds. If it's, for us for, it's, it's meant for us to uh, really expand on this idea that higher minds are right next to us. It depends on us to connect with them. After a few minutes, Marta in, in, informed us that the institution and spiritual mentor, a disciple of the Saint of Assisi, was waiting for us. The room where he welcomed us was simple, without adornments, except a picture on the wall of Saint Francis of Assisi, kissing a leper at the times he was still aspiring to become a knight in the world. And then this friend is Gracindo. The brother Garcindo, who greeted, uh, um, greeted them kindly, explained that following the guidance of the Povoredo, in, in this case, um, uh, for some friends of Assisi, he had been at the helm of the institution since its foundation. He further conveyed that the current situation worried him greatly based on the somewhat alarming medical predictions for the pandemic, as well as the spiritual information that had recently reached him. For some months now, humanity benefactors had come to realize the terrible onslaught of the strange virus, seemingly developed in a lab using the common strain of influenza, whose harm would persist on Earth for more than two years, surprising the duration of the Spanish flu. So taking consideration that this was actually um, brought to us around uh, 2020, here we are in this, you know, um, development of you know two years or a little bit more depending or where we want to put a mark on this um that we are you know again uh living the consequences of the 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 pandemic that we are still going through in you know in kind of fading away little by little thank god but he continues um by saying he talked about the charity to be extended to patients and for that matter to all sufferers in the process of evolution, conveying directly to the to Spinelli that he could count on all services of the institution at any time and without prior um, uh, authorization. Remember, I want to just go back here and say that Brother Gracindo is actually the the mentor of the uh, the spiritual um, uh, part of this home, 
where they're staying, right? In the spirit realm that is connected with the work and the, the group of or um, um, spiritist um, houses, spirit location workers um, in the physical realm. Clearly designated for the task, Spinelli explained that he this was his first time in an activity of this nature that so far he had been emotionally concerned to Brazil's southern region, endeavoring um, the expansion of spiritism and its incomparable activities. And we're going to see a picture of Spinelli here. If, as you may remember, um, uh, remember um, Spinelli is actually the, the head of the group that Mr. Menon is part of it, right? He was a very good um, um, activist in terms of um, I shouldn't say activist, but a good worker, spiritist work in Brazil that he and, and he focused, at, as you can see here, mainly in the south part of Brazil. He was um, he was Italian and he actually moved to Brazil at a young age and uh, he, he he learned about spiritism. He studied spiritism and he actually conducted many works, uh, spiritist works in Brazil. And now he's being called to actually work in this um, endeavor of bringing comfort to people who are going through or facing the um, the, the difficulties um, connected with um, COVID-19 or coronavirus. Brother Gracino then asked two of his assistants to show us the grounds of the beautiful institution. The, and then he, again, as we were saying earlier, and then I think it's important for us to highlight this, you know, he talks about the, the the organization, what their, you know, their their mission in this in this location. The institution's specific mission was concentrated on education. The Saint of Assisi, however, had also recommended that the children of, of Calvary, as Jesus called them, those suffering the vicissitudes of physical decline and abandonment should not be forgotten. Right? Not only the sanitation, housekeeping routines, and other specialized sectors, the medical, the dental, pharmaceutical, lab, and normal delivery facility, facilities caught our attention, but also the overall joy and pleasant psychosphere generated by volunteers and employees, perfectly aware that love is the greatest preventive and curative therapy. It, it begs us again to connect with this ideas guy, these idea guys. Uh, you know, it, it, and we're not talking about uh, heaven. We're not talking about, um, you know, something that is not, you know, uh, completely unattainable. It is. I mean, it's not easy to establish this organization. It's not easy to establish, um, you know, minds or connect minds to do the same work and to be as uh, predisposed to do the work, you know, of kindness. Um, but it's something doable, right? Um, it's definitely not easy. Um, and in first, and in, 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 in most importantly, it's important for us to to really connect, you know, with this message and say, how can I do this in my life? How can I establish this in my home, right? If we're a part of a spiritist center, how can we uh, uh, present ourselves this way? When I say present, is actually do the work. <laughs> it's not just saying, oh, I'm so nice, or, you know, be of a person who only speaks about it, but doesn't do anything about it. And this is one of the things, these are one of the things that as we were reading this, as we were working to present this, we we're thinking about, wow, what an amazing place, right? That's why we put this beautiful garden here as well that reminds uh, of uh, so much of this um, beautiful organization, right? Connection with God. We were later informed that this selfless spirit had worked directly with the gentle father Francis that his involvement in this current endeavor came from his love for some of the reincarnated spirit as they were part of a group he intended to lead back to Jesus. This is really interesting because many of the spirits that are working here with Ms. Mr. Miranda, as we have seen in the past, has a greater purpose than just say, okay, uh, as we're going to, I'll give you, I'll, I'll jump ahead of myself here. You know, we're gonna we're gonna see that there is a viro virologist here um, in in the picture, right? Actually helping and giving some information about uh, the the coronavirus. But a lot of them had a connection in the past. They either suffer through a a pandemic, they either went through a a a severe trial, right? Or let's say expiation, um, and 
some of them work directly with higher minds like um, Father Francis, uh, as he's saying here. But when he says that as they were, this this man, uh, Brother Gracindo, uh, he is in, interested in um, uh, helping or leading back uh, souls, spirits back to Jesus. There is a connection there. Yes, many of these high spirits, they 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 let's say they accept the challenge if or or, uh, or maybe we can say the opportunities to you know to help others, right? But there is a connection there, and perhaps the the he's he's um, longevity in this place tells us that perhaps there are a lot of souls that he was connected in the past that still are still in need of help, right? And what this has, all of this, to, you know, has to do with us, to do with our lives, because sometimes we we connect with people in in such a way that it, it you know, we're, we we kind of question, right? I mean, why? What is my connection with this individual? What is my connection with, you know, the the town that I'm in, or the connection with the school, the the work that I do? Uh, what's the purpose? And we don't find a direct reasons or answers for it. But it's rooted all the way back there, right? It's rooted in such a way that it's beyond our comprehension, and sometimes we get upset with it, and it's okay to to get upset. It's be, and it's in this moment of upsetness that if we're truly curious about ourselves and our situation, we will find the reasons and we'll calm ourselves and think, if God allow me to be here or wants me to, me to be here, there is a lesson for it, right? Not only for other individuals, but most importantly for ourselves. So just something interesting that, you know, crossed our minds that we were working and going through this passage here. It also touched us to see that the practice of mediumship with Jesus was maintained and exemplified at the institutions. With the respect and high regard it deserves with the Christian principles recommended by Kardec. Here again, the red um, font. <laughs> Thanks to human beings, intellectual and moral development, as they become more receptive, receptive to beauty and reflection, they also acquire more perception of the so-called paranormal phenomena, enabling a better attunement to the subtle vibrations that surround them. Over time, through the increased exercise of mediumistic capabilities, the phenomena will become normal, making this delicate physical sense more refined and transcendental. Once more, it is up to us to, and, and uh, I, I, I think one of the, the, the interesting point over here is that he says, thanks to human beings' intellectual and moral development, because we uh, tend to associate, you know, um, uh, spirituality, we tend to associate um, 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 mediumship to the moral development. Yes, there is a, a lot of moral development on it because it is a tool that we can use for the good, for the bad. Um, but it's also interesting to see intellectual, right? So when we talk about um, perhaps technology, right? Will technology help us in the future in ways that we don't know in terms of us um, establishing more, establish more accurate, more effective connections with the beyond? We don't know. And this is just a one way to explore the idea of intellectuality. But when we go to school, um, you know, when we learn something, the 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 idea is to create a, a high level of discernment uh, towards a specific topic, right? So intellectuality in this case here will also bring will help us guide ourselves in this uh, growth moral growth as well because of our uh, capabilities to understand the topic a little bit more or to be more open for new ideas too. But it, to say the least is it's important for us to develop the, the this connection with the beyond so that things becomes more refined and so our connection becomes more refined and transcendental as well at the institution we experience a vibrate a vibrant world um, with movement and powerful resources which nonetheless went unnoticed to those who lived or worked in its various bustling sectors could it be two worlds in perfect harmony or just one world with two fields of perception. This is very philosophical, right? And it makes us wonder when we're reading about these things, it's like, is it two worlds? 
is it truly two worlds, right? It, it, can we uh, uh, assimilate this as the the incarnate and the discarnate um, two different, you know, worlds? And yes, to an extent we can, but at the same time, it's just the separation of the physical body. And and I would also add that is the the our perception that is not well refined to see the bigger picture, right? Especially for us incarnated ones, it's really hard for us to understand this. And then it brings the 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 virologist, right? Our friend uh, Eudalbo. And uh, I, I know we have trouble by you know saying this name, even though it's a Portuguese name, um, and it's the first time that I actually see it. So just bear with me there. One of the members of our group who had been a virologist in this last ring in his last reincarnation whispered gently, "It is the hours of the Angelus of prayer, praising Mary, the Holy Mother, in the room dedicated to the munistic activities to where we are now heading." So imagine, you know, you're in this moment contemplating everything and somebody comes to you, let us pray, right? Let us have a moment of prayer, right? And then he actually called up everyone to this location. Dr. Eldalbo, introduced to us before we started this journey, had been an eminent and dedicated virologist on the earth. He had visited this institution several times, enjoying great respect from its members due to his contributions relating to less lethal viruses spread out throughout this century and still flaring up sporadically. So what happens here? Brother Gracindo then opened the meeting with a moving prayer, after which he asked Spinelli, here, here it is, Spinelli, as we mentioned earlier, to open the gospel according to Spiritism by Allan Kardec and read a paragraph. Interesting enough, he, as we usually do in our um, uh, works at the SSB, we open sporadically the, the gospel according to spiritism, and um, anyone can do this at home, at you know, at, at you know, at your place of work if you if you can, <laughs> uh, at home, whatever, um, and read a passage. But he opened uh, sporadically in this in in this um, in this in this passage, uh, chapter six, item two where it says all types of suffering, misery, disappointment, physical pain, loss of loved ones, find their consolation in faith, in the future, and in trust in God's justice, which Christ came to teach humankind. On the other hand, upon those who expect nothing after this life, or who simply doubt, afflictions bear down with all their weight, and no hope comes to soften their heart. Their their bitterness. This is what led Jesus to say, come unto me, all of you who are weary, weary, and uh, will, and I will comfort you. So then Spinelli goes into make some comments about uh, this passage. I'm not going to read this with you, um, with you right now. Uh, I would like to reserve the, the three or four paragraphs that he talks about this, uh, this passage here. Uh, for us at the end, as our prayer, it's very enlightening, it's very kind as well, his words. So I would like to utilize this as our prayer for the end of our session today. And uh, I'll give you the reference on in terms of what page it is in the book as well. But it's really interesting. And we, we, we also um, finalize this chapter uh, by saying, uh, well, bringing what Mr. Miranda says that Brother Gracindo considered the gravity after... Uh, I'm sorry, after Spinelli gives his words about this passage, saying that he considered the gravity of the, mo the moment on the earth, acknowledging everyone's concern regarding the pandemic, which now, uh, due to its aggressiveness, sorry about the typo there, had become terribly evident, surprising the so-called civilized world that in reality was still somewhat primitive. This is not Leo saying, this is actually the mentor of the home actually uh, right, um, uh, reminding us. He mentioned the exploiters that would take advantage of the painful circumstance to increase death and dishonor. But also that we should remain focused in our com commitments of love and charity as a response to the planetary plea for mercy from the compassionate heavens. So again, they are aware of it. They know what's going on and they're doing the work. And 
it's a rhetorical question that we can, you know, uh, apply to ourselves later on and to say, are we connecting with these minds? Are we paying attention to this high work? Or am I so caught up in the middle of the whole thing, right? Or we, uh, because now some months have gone by that we didn't pay attention to this at all, right? I like to say that, you know, for myself that I did. Yeah, there were moments of despair. There were moments that I was thinking, where are we going to go with this? There were moments of indignation where we looked at it and, and it says, we haven't learned yet, right? But there are concerns, you know, there are concerns from, you know, from the higher up in terms of higher spirits. But the way they deal with it is how um, we, you know, the, 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 the lesson here. Instead of wasting their time with, you know, things that are not going to help or thoughts or feelings or even actions, you know, uh, directly, they try to transcend um, in their own ways and which is something that we have to learn to get themselves out of the or all of us out of this situation. So that's the idea there that I would like to finalize this chapter and move on into chapter four, um, where now we're going to be uh, changing gears here to the activities overview. Uh, we're a little bit of um, pressed with time here. I did just notice, oh my goodness, <laughs> time flies when you're having fun. And then um, uh, Mr. Marina says, that, that same night, under the beautiful canopy of a large tree and a sky of shining stars, we met to discuss our future activities on the earth during the bitter days of the pandemic. And again, talking, connecting with nature. After a silent prayer in which we nourish ourselves with the emanation of prana and the trees in the moonlight, Dr. Eldalbo enlightened us. And then Eldalbo, the virologist, uh, viral virologist here uh, talks about the uh, what's happening and extensively as well about the the uh, coronavirus he says the following here we are gathering in a special group alongside the workers of light and love for the purpose of helping our struggling brothers and sisters in their process of evolution more cruel than a war the pandemic will reap hundreds of thousands of lives, some by the natural processes of moral transformation of the earth towards a world of regeneration, while others will be exiled to another orb after a period of convalescence in communities in the spirit world. They will no longer breathe the atmosphere of Mother Earth, who they poison with their outrageous and rebellious behavior. So we're talking about two groups of people here. One is the individuals who are disconnecting uh, from the physical body because of the um, the issues that we have going through, right, in, in, in terms of the pandemic, that they will be able to reincarnate on planet Earth. And the second um, uh, group of people that unfortunately, because they're, you know, the way they vibrate, their thoughts, their feelings, they will not be able to reincarnate on planet Earth anymore. And they will be given the opportunity to reincarnate on another planet, um, uh, I would say not as well evolved as planet Earth, right? But they will be given the opportunity to go to those locations to apply what they have learned here. However, morally speaking, they're going to be uh, leveled off with, uh, with the individuals of that planet, right? The way they vibrate. Much like the way we connect ourselves um, when we enter our cars. If you're, you know, attuning to um, rock music, right? What are you going to listen to? You're going to tune in to that station that plays rock. Or if you play uh, classical music, right? If you like classical music, you will tune in to that um, uh, radio station that plays classical music. It's all about um, our emanations, the way we, we tune with the world. And it's getting to a point now, uh, to the highest point of our, our um, evolving process that we will be no longer giving, we'll no longer be given the opportunity to reincarnate here if we're not vibrating in the same level as Earth is vibrating or the moment of transitions as we have mentioned here several times. Viruses are one of the most complex chapter among the um, organism existing on the Earth. Many were unknown until the 19th century when Louis Pasteur um, investigating rabies found that a microorganism was transmitted after the bite of the affected animal. 
but there was no way to verify it. It started one of the greatest investigations to identify the microscope agents of diseases, although it was later found that some are single or double-stranded, a bit long for their proportion. Today, uh, there are more than 2,000, excuse me, 200,000 of these terrible infections, infectious agents. Their structure is very simple, and subsequently it was discovered that they can be manipulated in labs, presenting uh, mutations that generate, it, that generate immense difficulties for the manufacturing of the vaccines to fight them. So then he goes into the explanation of the coronavirus, right? Um, how it is, you know, how it acts, how do we prevent ourselves, um, how do we, uh, I'm sorry, how do we, uh, how do we protect ourselves in terms of um, um, uh, really um, making sure that we're cleaning hands, washing hands, you know, showering and doing all the things that we have heard, um, but also uh, make sure that we're keeping distance depending on how we, uh, if we have been affected from those who are affected as well, and the time that it takes for us to, for our bodies to adjust and not transmit anymore uh, the coronavirus. And then we were deeply, and then this is um, Ms. Rihanna saying, we we're deeply interested in getting to know better this enemy of physical life, which finds supportive energy in human beings, moral, excuse me, human beings, moral and spiritual conduct. Now we're going to shift a little bit into the, uh, not only the physical, but the spiritual component of the, of the pandemic as well. Interestingly, interestingly, he continued in a calm voice. It's not fatal in animals uh, at, towards the end, uh, which can often be transmitters, um, it, it, excuse me, often be transmitters, as it is the case of the bat in the history of the current tragedy. Mental balance, unconditional trust in God, prayer filled with love, actions of charitable nature produce the antibodies that prevent easy contagion. Even so, some painful and unfortunate cases will occur, striking doctors, nurses, and beloved family members due to the imperatives of the sovereign laws of life. I'll repeat this again, folks. Mental balance, unconditional trust in God, prayer filled with love, actions of a charitable nature produced, produce the antibodies that present, prevent easy contagion or contamination here. Even so, some painful and unfortunate cases will occur, striking doctors, nurses, and beloved family members due to the imperatives of the sovereign laws of life. In this case, folks, if we're mentally balanced, which none of us are 100%, and I recognize that, and I put myself in this position, right? But if we're doing the best to, you know, to connect with, with what's best in the universe, right? Unconditional trust in God, giving it to God, um, prayer filled with love, actions of charitable nature towards, uh, uh, towards one another will produce and produce um, the antibodies that we need, not only towards the coronavirus, but any other virus, any other disease as well. Yeah, there are certain situations, as he's saying here, that God calls us to, uh, to, to the other side. There's nothing that we can do to avoid it, right? Um, it's just a, a nature part of nature, right? Our time will come that we perhaps have to be on the other side. But I like to think that perhaps if that happens, and for us who have loved, who have lost loved ones, those um, that led a righteous and good life and were able to do some or all of these things that he's mentioned here, were called for a specific reason, right? And I think that we we can all connect again with this um, uh, with this uh, positive aspect if we have unconditional trust in God. If he felt silent, and then Spinelli, who is the head of the group that Dr. Minan is part of it, um, start explaining what and how they were going to approach the cases by saying, our job is to inspire individuals and maintain a healthy conduct, not a healthy life, a health conduct in general, to embrace the safety guidelines proposed by health authorities to keep an upright moral behavior and a peaceful domestic coexistence. Very important here, a peaceful domestic coexistence to develop solidarity and respect along with the cooperation and bonding with the spirit world because physical life is always temporary. For many of us, 
uh, we we have come across individuals, um, um, uh, couples who unfortunately um, divorced. Um, and this is not only husband and wife, you know, partners, but also friends as well. They, you know, they're living together and then all of a sudden they couldn't stand anymore, you know, not only one another, but sometimes themselves, you know, and, and, and it's tough because we saw this happening. We still see it. And, and I want to take this to an, an, another level because we, we have to take in consideration that the, the consequences of the, of the, the pandemic has not hit us yet right so it's important for for us to remind uh, remind ourselves of this needless to say at this time of collective trials and testimonies programmed by life the gates have been open in regions of darkness and pain in the spirit world where perverse spirits endure deep sufferings upon their return to the earth they unleash unfounded revenges terrible um, persecutions fomenting crime and evil behaviors. So it's like feeding fire, uh, uh, fuel to the fire, right? They, the, 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 let's see, the less evolved spirits, when they see that, you know, that we are going through this turmoil, they like to add more fuel to it. And they partake on the, the, uh, the difficult moments that we're going through, right? Instead of helping, if we're not attuning to the higher minds, we're going to attune with them and we will connect with them and they will create more um, issues in our lives. Thus, many cruel spirits obsession they were not able to impose before are now possible as they take advantage of a chaotic world to worsen human beings' physical condition, spreading their hideous influence in processes of depletion of energies and disenchantment excuse me, with, uh, with life. It's mainly sucking our energies, like taking our energies. And sometimes we feel drenched, right? We have felt at one point of our lives during these couple, two years, past two years, drenched at times. It's like, I can't take it anymore. I cannot even listen anymore about this thing. You know, um, and then we have to wear masks and then we have to uh, do this and then we have to isolate. We want to see our uh, family members, right? And despair sets in and guess what? We're then connecting with these minds over here, unfortunate minds. Unfortunately, frivolous individuals on the earth are up in arms against the restrictions and rules imposed by worrisome authorities. Hesitant in making the correct decisions, wrangling for the rewards of official positions without any real concern for people's health. Faulty statistics, malevolent attitudes, and propaganda spreading through the scheming of false information aimed to mis at misleading results for absurd gain, or coupled with the sowing of panic and together with the perverse illness, psychological damages of complex recovery, right? So we see here the things that, you know, uh, Spinelli talking about, the things that we already seen it, uh, authorities, leaders that are actually not really paying attention to what's going on with us, but to have their own gains. We are part of the workers preparing uh, the future of humankind as we ourselves return to the beloved planet. Thus, complete dedication and selflessness will be required to install the kingdom of God on the earth on its way to regeneration. Some may say, perhaps, that this is a very um, egotistical way to see it or to help, right? Okay, I'm going to help because I'm going to go back to earth. But Hey, guess what? You know, it's part of us. I mean, if we want to come back to Earth, let us do, let us pave the way for us to come back to a better planet, right? And we're always reminded, right? Don't think that, you know, what others have left for you, but think of what you can, you know, leave for yourself in terms of if I want to reincarnate and, you know, reincount this planet later on, especially now that we know that if we're not doing the right things, we're going to be taken to a different planet, no longer the planet Earth, perhaps in worse conditions on of compared to planet Earth, we then have to think, let me do the right things here. Let me help. Let me connect with these higher minds. So many blessings constantly pour from heaven to benefit human minds, imparting the knowledge of the immortality of the soul and the laws that govern the universe. The higher minds are there. To be able to connect with our incarnate brothers and sisters, transmitting courage and valor in this difficult time, as well as 
in other possible serious matters is an honor I recognize not to deserve. However, in view of the divine concession, I will strive to work in this field and see it grow, thriving and luminous, blessed by the, um, the master of Nazareth. Again, very humble Spinelli saying to us, look, I know nothing, know very little in this, in this regard, but I will do my best. And it begs us to look at it and say, hmm, you know, sometimes we're presented with different tasks and we complain, right? And then in the, natu in the, in the nat natural meditative silence that followed one of our members, our brother Claudio specialized in the application of bioenergy and a bearer of high virtues inquired. We will certainly find that the virus related condition in souls entangled in subtle or serious spirit obsession processes amid great physical torments. How should we though, um, shall, how should we behave concerning our teamwork? And then Spinelli finalizes by saying, our infirm brothers and sisters are the legacy of the martyrdom of our Lord Jesus Christ, who brings them to us, the heirs of his gospel, so that above all else, we love them as if they were children of our hearts. We will seek to calm them with comforting passes and the inspiration to avoid self-destructive and violent thoughts, which only worsens their condition. In many of the houses we will visit, invited by the spiritist beliefs conveyed during the gospel at home for the purpose of creating defensive vibrations for the families, we will seek to inspire its members with trust in God and charitable work, especially related to the hungry and the dissolution experiencing a wide range of nightmarish difficulties. I want to take a pause here, folks, that and, and kind of uh, uh, summarize in a way uh, what not only we have study, and I'm going to check my time here, what we have study, um, we, what we are studying in this, in you know, with these first couple chapters here, but also what we have seen with the previous two works that we have done in 2009 and 2020 and 2021 with the planetary transition, um, as well as uh, with the book Dawn of a New Era. Recently, um, we were working, um, we were listening to a very interesting gentleman from the uh, Spirit Federation of Brazil, and he was highlighting uh, some um, interesting aspect um, of that, that we learn with Spiritism in terms of mediumship, right? And it has to do a lot with what we're seeing here. And I would like to just to make a point here and kind of connect with the passages that we saw and read um, at the beginning of the text or that we presented here. Number one, one of the things that he talks about is that, you know, in this transition, right? Then when we talk about a planet or world of regeneration, what does it mean? I mean, many of us, we can go back to the gospel. We can go back to, the, the spirits book and kind of like make our, our assumptions. But I heard him saying, and Daniel, if you can um, um, type the, the name of um, uh, the gentleman here that I'm, uh, that we were listening to, um, he's a, uh, he's a, a I believe um, one of the, the gentlemen who were responsible for the, the work of um, uh, mediumship in the Spirit Federation of Brazil. But I don't remember his name. Daniel actually will type for us. He will remember. He was saying something really interesting that uh, the the a plan of regeneration. We will understand uh, or we will see the true um, uh, characteristic of a plan of regeneration when we establish a solid uh, solidarity between us, the the incarnated ones, with the spiritual realm. And that to me was like wow. I never heard of such a thing, right? Because it begs us to understand that, you know, is it just, you know, or to ask, you know, is is it just, you know, technology? Is it just that perhaps we're going to be flying? Perhaps we're not going to need a phone anymore to connect with one another, right? Perhaps, you know, you will see Leo coming to your house and perhaps, you know, speaking right in front of you in terms of technology. Not that I want to enter your house. <laughs> I mean, already entering your house, um, you know, through technology here, but it will be more 
let's say, uh, more solid, right? And we'll be able to see more and connect in different ways. But it's beyond that. You know, perhaps we, you know, the machinery won't matter anymore because we'll connect with in such a way with our minds and our hearts. And it's like, well, I know that perhaps Kirsten is thinking of me right now, or perhaps my cousin in Brazil would like to speak with me. Let's just, you know, take a moment and stop, right? But most importantly, we will be well connected with the higher minds, right? Because one thing that he also said is that if you think about it, if we think about it, perhaps the t towards the end of the transformational moments of the planet of regeneration, this is going to be thousands of years from now, hopefully in the last, you know, thousands. <laughs> but, you know, when we go from the transition of a, a, a planet of regeneration, right? Um, you know, towards the end of its evolution, uh, we don't need it to have uh, the 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 mediums, the the, the mediumistic um, uh, meanings anymore, because this connection will be so um, it will be so subtle that we're not going to have you know we're not going to have a, a a need of a mediumistic meaning, right? We'll be so established, connected with the higher realms that it's like okay, I need help, I need guidance. And the guidance that we're going to be asking is not what's going to happen to me tomorrow. It's not for me to get a new job or for me to, you know, uh, analyze mundane ideas or perhaps to talk about a, vi a, a, a virus that is actually affecting us. No, it's going to be more about how we become ever more connected with God. How do we get closer to Jesus, right? So, uh, you know, I wanted to bring this because, again, it connects with this whole message. And the reason we have the three books here, because we have been saying this over and over and over. And guess what? I have to say it over and over to myself, and I'll bring this to you with a, uh, a kind heart to remind you that the things that we mentioned here earlier today, once human perception expands further, penetrating the various vibrational layers between the physical and the spirit world, it will enable the knowledge that life does not stop that the idea of empty space is a result of the insufficiency of human senses connecting with both realms, right? The senses that we only were so limited, only looking um, uh, towards the physical, towards the now, without experiencing, when I say experience, it's not just think, okay, I'm a spiritist and I believe in the future. I believe that I will come back, but experience, when I say this is, at least for myself, it's mind blowing because now I'm looking at it and saying, wow, you know, experiencing a new life. I'm going to do the right things right now that perhaps not only next year I will feel better, but in the next life as well. Thanks to human beings, intellectual and moral development, as we said earlier, as they become more receptive to, be receptive to beauty and reflection, right? beauty in, in not the beauty that we connect, unfortunately, with planet Earth right now, but the beauty that um, um, uh, Mr. Miranda is saying about, you know, uh, nature, when we're reflective, when we're reflecting about ourselves, right, they also acquire more perception of the so-called paranormal phenomena, enabling a better attunement to the subtle vibrations that surround them. Over time, through the increased exercise of mediumistic capabilities, the phenomenon will become normal, making the delicate physical sense more refined and transcendental. Interestingly enough, this week, I was actually talking to a friend at work and where uh, she mentioned that out of nothing, you know, she was, you know, going on with her, with her, um, with her day and she, her sister's name came to mind, you know, she just, remembered and she wrote down her sister's name twice and then she went on to tell us that you know she became a little bit concerned and she went ahead and called her sister guess what her sister had actually just uh going through a little accident and she was fine everything's fine but she was able to connect with with her sister yes there is a connection already pre-established one can say you know two sisters connecting but think of the future as connecting that way Oh my God! Me, somebody's thinking of me, or I'm thinking of this person. Perhaps you know, there's a little bit more to it that we need to dive in in, in it, right? And understand this connection. And this is what we're striving to do in terms of our connection with the spiritual realm, right? And this will be the the actual um, the true highlight 
of a planet of regeneration. So what is the call to action? How can we help ourselves? As we were saying in the beginning, what can we do physically? If it is too much for us to do mentally and spiritually, let us do physically. If there are any clutter in your life, any, and, and I say this in, in general, anything that is holding us back, let us get rid of. Let us really live and try to live a more light, uh, uh, ever light, uh, I would say lighter life, right? Where things are not holding us back, right? If one can do this spiritually or mentally, let it is yes. If, as one of the Angelis tells us, if there is a, a thought, a negative thought that comes to mind or harbors our heart, let us replace it. Let us then think of something that is positive. Let us connect with Jesus. Let us connect with our mentors. If we need help, let us call one another. If we need help, let us watch, you know, perhaps a session where someone like this, that someone can come and bring a new and light new ideas to all of us. So it's important for us to change our behaviors, change our perception about the world, because as we have seen here throughout the two past books and at the beginning of this, this book right here, that they want to help us. They want to guide us despite all the craziness that is going on, despite all the malevolent beings that are around us, and, and they want to um, um, help us habilitate ourselves to avoid connecting with these negative minds. And one may think, so I can finalize this, so why are they here? Why are the negative elements or individuals or spirits are here? Well, number one, the, the, the grace of God allows us to to try once more and and make our decisions, right? Exercise our free will, but unfortunately, some in, some spirits they 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 want to continue in this path for a little bit longer than ourselves, right? And who are we to judge them? But we also have the capabilities to choose the, what's best for us, and that's how we connect with the higher minds, right? Um, allowing ourselves to do um, greater works. Um, more uplifting um, uh, exercises in life and things that will connect with us. Remember, the, 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 the gardens that are presented here, the nature that is presented by Banofalo and it's it, it doesn't just appear there. For a location to become of such a magnitude in, term, in general terms, as he brings here, and he analyzes certain, some of the points, there's a lot of work to be done to get to that point, right? We all know that perhaps for us to have, for us to sit down right now and watch this talk, we went through a lot today. We went through quite a bit, taking care of our physical bodies, taking care of our homes, you know, taking care of family members, dealing with the feelings of others, dealing with our feelings. So it's not easy. So we wish that this um, moment that we spent here together have allowed you to enter you know our our uh, our difficulties and get curious about ourselves and say what can i do to connect with these higher minds we know what's going on we know that there is a, a pandemic not only in terms of uh, of a virus but there are several other pandemics that are harboring our lives right now ignorance being one and uh, we can always liberate ourselves as we connect with these higher minds and as we connect with one another with no further ado then uh, we have uh, covered the introduction, the chapters one through four, and we are already excited to um, next month bring timely clarifications and explanation of events. On that note, I will bring, I would like to bring Kirsten here for some questions and comments. Well, our first comment is, oh, wow. Wow. You know, we read this chapter um, before Leo, you know, beforehand, and it, it still wows us, the information. Um, but let's, this isn't about me. This is about the Dr. Miranda's, the, the information he brought. So let's dive into some of the comments and some of the questions. Um, whew, I'm still processing once again. Um, so we have some people that are just saying hello. So shout out to Alba and Yasko um, and everyone else that was 
saying hello. Um, but let's go ahead right to one of, um, and then we have Paula. I don't know if you wanted to comment on this, but I, I, I noticed that too, um, the, the initial chapter that you read, the first chapter that you read, it was the second reference to the, a lab origin. Um, yeah. Oh, I can't hear you, Leo. I was unmuting myself. Sorry. Okay. A second reference to a lab origin. Yeah, because in the in the free, previous chapter, it referenced um, uh, the lab. Yeah, well, I believe she's talking about the what they they have mentioned about you know the and I think we touch base on this as well that you know in terms of the 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 virus being generated or created in a lab is that what I believe that's what she's referring to. Um, I, I, yeah, I believe so. She's talking about page fifty seven at the end. There is that what it is. Page 50 says, where are the unhappy brothers going to? No, that's not it. Okay. I believe mm -hmm. that's what it is. Maybe she can clarify her question there. And sorry about my flickering. Um, <laughs> my my connection is not well established. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, let's move on to actually an, another question she poses or another question she poses. She says, does, quote, more receptive to beauty and reflection, end quote, mean mindfulness silence and observation meditation paula I, I gotta tell you thank for the hint because i am still trying to understand this too um i believe uh what's the name of the author talks about a spirit a spirit that talks about um art uh what's the what's the name of the author oh you know, Le next time. Leon, Denis. Leon Denis yes mm -hmm. and and it takes us into this this uh, you know understanding what beauty is talks about you know um we have studied this I believe Alba talked about um this topic at the SSB before and and it it kind of like leads us to a you know to a better understanding of what uh this reception to beauty truly is right um, and this reflection, uh, I think that that what I would say, this receptive to beauty would be the, the analysis, right? You know, to 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 truly be aware of what's you know around you, and we think that beauty is you know a green field or perhaps the ocean, you know, uh, or but but life is is presenting itself in so many ways that we're you know that we're not aware yet and it's okay not to be aware the thing is i think that that um that manofalo and miranda is giving us the hint let us be aware you know to the moment be mindfulness as you're saying here and then in terms of the reflection as to is to internalize this and to say how do i bring this to my heart how do i live this moment right and, and that can be in the moment in itself, as well as later on. This can be, you know, when we look at somebody's eyes, right? This can be, and, and you know, truly look at somebody's eyes and you will see, you know, how beautiful it is. Um, it's funny because, you know, this crossed my mind when I was, um, uh, actually, this was the last session when we presented. I had my eyes dilated right before the session. Unfortunately, I was going through something that I had to get that 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 work done uh, in my eyes, and and the doctor was actually showing me, you know, the picture of the eye, and I was thinking, oh my God, God gave me, you know, these two beautiful eyes, and they working. Um, it was just an amazing thing. I was like, oh, you know, wowed, right? And I have this doctor in front of me who, you know, went to school and, un, you know, study all these things. So I was, in, I, at least to me, I was reflecting, I was internalizing, you know, all that was in front of me. Yes, it was, he, I was going through a lot of technical terms and he was explaining to me, I was overwhelmed, worry about the, 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 the meeting as well that I had to, you know, present here with everyone later on. But to say the least is this reflection, right? Being in the moment, what a, what a beautiful thing, right? And and we, these are things that sometimes we don't pay attention. So yes, I think that you know I'm glad that you brought this because I am still learning, right? Reflection for you will be different. Reflection for Kirsten. Reflection for all of us will be different. But I think that you know the moment that we bring to our hearts and we start thinking and analyzing, not with just reason, but what kind of feelings that brings to you, right? Put the the 
bring the reason, but also how does that make us feel, right? And and describe it. I think it's important for happy, unsecured, right? And then you start getting yourself connected with it and you learn more about yourself. You learn more about others and in general about the universe as well. So I hope that helps. <laughs> I'm looking for the, 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 okay, I found it. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> um, let's go on to, uh, again, thank you for that, Leah. Let's go on to um, a question brought by Yasko. She says in chapter three, um, regarding the effects of the special environment surrounding the Institute on the paraspiritual constitution, I wonder if I can enjoy such paraspiritual aid if I create inside my apartment a nature environment with trees, flowers, insects, not only with vases of plants, but say by playing and watching a video with all these elements? Be careful with what you wish for. Uh, you can, but <laughs> but not necessarily we we yet have a full, uh, well, uh, I would like to say I don't, because mosquitoes, they do sometimes can be very annoying or you know uh, bugs right um we were talking about yesterday um when we go to acetic sometimes you know for some of you who does not know here the let's call it the eastern shore one of the one of the beaches of maryland uh, it's called acetic uh it's a beautiful place but there are some you know a couple times that i went there uh there are so many bugs there are really you really have to be uh in sync to say the least the least with nature in order not to be bugged out <laughs> so um it, you know it, it, it we we have to analyze you know what what we want to bring in into our lives and how we perceive it um i have a friend he actually went you know he's a biologist and he he doesn't mind he actually do excursions he goes to places there in 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 certain to a certain degree um, not a place that I want to be, you know, dealing with plants and different kinds, of, and, but he loves it, right? So it's not for everybody that I'm saying, um, but in terms of an environment, yes, we can uh, to a certain degree. And I say this because there are, when I say environment, you have to include everyone around you as well. But it's doable. Let's think of this, right? This location where they are, the physical and the spiritual around this physical location in terms of the spirit to center, right? Um, there's a lot of work being done and there's there has been a lot of work done to get to them to that level. So number one, it's not something that's gonna happen overnight. Uh, number two, there is a constant work being done because there are the influences of, you know, attacks of different, uh, groups of spirits, and, 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 and I'm talking about incarnated and discarnated ones, that continue to um, vibrate in different ways and affect us, right? If you are trying to lead, for example, a, a God at home, reading a good passage of the Bible, whatever spirits book you have, or whatever book you choose, and your neighbor, your neighbor is playing, you know, loud music, uh, there will be some difficult moments where you're going to have to knock on the neighbor's door and say, can we lower down the music a little bit, right? So I'm just giving this egotistic, you know, example that it will take a lot of work. And this is one of the things that we need to work within ourselves to understand our limitations, to understand the limitations of others, but nonetheless, to be courageous enough to, yes, establish the environment, this environment in our own homes. If it's doable on the other side, if it's doable for a spirit to center, perhaps a a, um, a religious um, institution, or let us even think of you know great examples of of um, businesses, well established and 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 um, well maintained business on planet Earth. Why do they, do they thrive? Why do they uh, continue to exist and continue to uh, uh, lead despite the, the, the competition is because they were reinventing themselves. They continue, they push through, uh, they, they, they come up with new ideas, new ways to do businesses. And I think this is an example for us to also, and I'm entering my <laughs> business degree here, but it is true, right? When we establish a mission statement to ourselves, I want to create a better environment for myself. Now you have to worry about, you know, the objectives of this mission, mission statements, right? How are you going to do it? The what, the how, 
right? So that's, you know, some of the alerts that I can bring. But to, to answer your question, yes, we can. We certainly can bring plants. We certainly can bring uh, life into our homes, right? You know, a pet or whatever it is that will bring us happiness and it will change the environment. We can play soft music, you know, and, and anything that will soothe the environment and connect with the higher minds. Yes, thank you. Well said, well said. Um, and then I'm gonna bring a question from Paula. She mentions on page 57, she asks, where are the unhappy brothers going to when they have to leave their infernal regions? That I do not know. <laughs> and it's not revealed to us. A passage from the from 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 the Bible that Jesus taught us that in my father's home there are many mansions, right? In my father's mansions or there are many, many homes the other way many around. Homes. Sorry. No, right. Um, yeah, and the in my father's home there are many mansions. Yeah. Many mansions. Thank you. And we also have to understand that that there are planets also going through the same transitions that we went through when we went from a primitive world to a primit um, to a planet um, of trials and expiation, right? Planet Earth has gone through this transition. We were a primitive planet where we actually were fighting the elements. We're fighting one another to, you know, maintain our cave, to maintain our clan, right? And then we were start making uh, strides in terms of um, we, we, we were able to establish communication, right? A verbal communication, written communications, and, you know, to, to separate ourselves into groups and do different things, uh, create tools, right? And we evolved and we evolved more. And then we went, we, we are no longer, you know, the cave individuals, the spirits that were recently um, created by God, right? Then now we organize ourselves a little bit more that we started, we start to face uh, um, a trials uh, to learn as well as to rescue the things that perhaps we have done to the environment, to one another. Now, what has happened on planet Earth that we saw that strikes us until today we have civilizations that came to live on earth that they were way more advanced than ourselves these individuals these spirits were also brought from other planets much like we are right now at the end of a planet of original um, 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 of expiation and trials right that they could no longer be in those planets and they were brought to planet earth what happened in turn they were able to morally evolve and they were also able to bring uh, technological um, advancements and different types of advancements to planet Earth that we were in need of that time, right? Now, the opposite is happening. For those who are no longer morally um, vibrating morally with us, uh, they are going to be going to other planets. Now, exactly what they, where this is, we don't know. Uh, but we know that it's happening little by little. Um, you know, more frequent than not, uh, you know, as we as we have seen, you know, with these teachings of Manuel Filomeno and Miranda, but it's really not up to us to know. I think it's up to us to, number one, to regenerate ourselves so that we continue to be part of a planet of regeneration and pray for them because some of them may be some of our loved ones, right, that unfortunately are not really uh, walking the talk or walking along with the great masses in terms of doing the good that they're being invited to do. Wow. Well said, Leo. I, I thought well that, I, sorry if it was a little bit long. <laughs> no, 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 not at all. No, I thought that was, that was really well said. Um, it looks like there's a comment here from Alba. This might've been related to something you might've mentioned about prayer. I'm not, um, she just was mentioning the Angelus hour is 6 p.m. At Cardiac Radio has our daily prayer live program, which we pray together at 6 p.m. Very well said, uh, Alba. It, it, this um, also crossed my mind when you said it, because, you know, in Latin countries, um, you know, we have this, this, um, the established moment at a six o'clock in Brazil is very evident, right? In in the in the Catholic community, where six o'clock is reserved for Mother Mary to stop and pray, right? 
but mm-hmm. it, it, it's we can we can do this at any time of our lives you know um we you know uh, can establish you know at nine o'clock at night you know we can establish at you know a specific time of you know in the morning you know that we will stop and pray and if we do this you know on a regular basis well whether it's a regular basis or not i mean if we're just praying we'll connect with god but if it happens on a regular basis other minds will connect with us right so it's you know it's truly important that um and it's really nice that you mentioned the work of kardec radio because yeah it, you know we can stop and connect well six o'clock i'm gonna stop for 10 15 minutes and i will pray you know it's you know and think of this as well because sometimes i'm listening to some other radio station spiritist radio station in brazil six o'clock over there is four o'clock here since we know we have two hour difference right pretty soon it's going to be only one hour so five o'clock you know we can stop as well four o'clock we can stop and what if this prayer is in japan guess what it's going to be a different time so anytime it's time to pray and it's best that we do it often at an organized manner so the organization of the higher minds will say yeah go over there this is a moment that they're praying perhaps serve them with uh, some of the joyous feelings and you know uh that you are bringing from the higher realms but thanks for the question wow yeah i mean this there's so much food for thought with this book and just this just these two chapters alone leo that i i, I feel like i'm not sure if i'm echoing some other um people that are watching that there's just so much just to take in and process and sit with and really ask ourselves you know how and how does this information land on us and what can we do how can we utilize it to be you know become the best version of ourselves um we have one last question actually from yasko um and then I think I'll ask you to uh, give your final thoughts and then we'll end with the prayer. But Yasko asks, is the massive discarnation by COVID-19 or the coronavirus accelerating the separation of the tear, the weed, from wheat, not allowing some to reincarnate on planet Earth? One can say so, uh, Yasko. I think that's a, a good way to put it, right? Because that's also a passage of the Bible that we learn, right? To uh, to separate, you know, the good the good from the bad, uh, and to make sure that we are, um, you know, doing the the same within ourselves, right? Um, you know, I think that you know we we are all getting to a point of our lives that we are tired. We are very tired, but it is in this tired tiredness that we can sometimes lose ourselves. And I say this because, um, you know, we think that, that, you know, the problem is always out there, right? But it, we have, you know, also the weed inside of us. And it is this sometimes that little weed that can, well, multiply, right? We see this when we're treating grass, when we're treating certain, you know, plantations, you name it. Um, but that little weed can turn into, you know, um, uh, something so big that will um, really affect the whole um, in in such a disastrous way that it it takes a while for you to go ahead and uproot all those those bad weeds. So, if anything, what I would say is for us to do that that um, that transformation inside of us to really look. Okay, this is something that can lead into a problem. So, if I like to do certain things that are still very mundane right? Throw it away. Put it aside. You know, ask yourself, you know, what are the results of this if I do this? If I think this way, if I connect with the negative side of a situation or of a person, right? And and yes, we're humans. We will do it. But I think it's important for us to analyze within ourselves. Um, and yes, um, God, for, through God's grace, um, it is happening. I mean, it, it's it's, there's no other way to put it. Um, but we we really have to pay attention to this and pray for them as well because we also hope that they can I- imagine if they're doing an internship into you know a new world and if they do it so well that they will be able to come back to planet Earth right uh, and I say this because Bezerra de Menezes actually um, one of his and we, we know the, the you know he's author and he has worked a lot with and actually in the, the last book Donald of New Era he was actually conducting the work 
he was also in a position to, you know, reach higher realms, but he wanted to stay on planet Earth to help the minds and hearts who were, you know, who are still here, afflicted and, and suffering. Um, and he decided to, to stay with them. This goes to show us that the grace of God, there are helpers out there that understand our sufferings, right? And the, the, these minds, they're not going to be forgotten. They're not going to be, you know, a, they're not going to uh, a disposal planet, right? That it's going to be like, okay, now forget it. No, they will also evolve. And who knows? Uh, you know, a billion of years from now, they're going to be Christ like, you know, spirits, you know, just like we will be. Who knows? Perhaps they, you know, when they go back to that, when they go to that planet, they will take a leap much higher than ours because they're going to be facing difficulties that we hadn't faced yet. Thank God right? Everybody have their own paths. But to finalize this, what I would like to say is that let us do our work. Let us do what is um, what is attainable to us as well, because what's important for me may not be important for others. What is easy for me may be very hard for others. And, you know, it is and then with um, uh, a humble eye and uh, heart that we um, say these final words. And I'm going to read this, this uh, this passage by Spinelli, and then we'll finalize with our prayer. Spinelli, after he read the passage from the gospel, as we read earlier, says the following, Peace be with us. We always refer to the miseries that befall us in the process of evolution, forgetting that they are the spurs, fruits of our own behavior. Our Heavenly Father provides us with reincarnation in order to prepare us for the glory that is reserved to us. However, the sickly inheritances of the initial process remain, dominating our inner landscapes and thrusting us into thrusting, excuse me, us into the abysses of imbalance and folly. If we understood the need for confidence in the future, we would stay away in the present from the lower passions that imprison us in the tears of inferiority. If we trusted in God, we would adopt the behavior taught and lived by Jesus, and surely our burden would be light and without fatigue. This is why Spiritism is the doctrine of consolation, similar to what Jesus exemplified, helping us to act rightly without the vain expectation that spirit mentors will miraculously solve our problems, understanding that it is up to us to find the solutions. May the Lord bless us all, and we ask our dear Creator, this is our words now, saying thank you, dear Lord, for this amazing moment that we had, the opportunity to uh, read, comprehend, ask questions, connect with one another, and most importantly, to have you and one another to be part of this great transition in our lives. We thank you, and so be it.